Okay. Uh, so sorry about uh, kind of the, the compressed timelines of this. We had, uh, obviously, the, the last session was coming in. So thank you very much for attending. Um, well, let, me, uh, let me open this up here. So I've noticed there's been a, a, a very differing amount of people attending uh, the OpenStack Summit and between the user sessions, user DevOps, and the design summit. So opening it right up, uh, who has contributed code to an open source project before? Okay, so about, about half the people. Um, who's contributed to OpenStack so far? One person. Okay, very cool. So this, this may be appropriate. Um, if, uh, those who haven't contributed to um, an open source pro or contributed open source project, who's here because they want to learn how? Perfect. Cool. So what we're going to talk about today is right up, uh, right up that alley. So a couple things. I uh, want to go over how this all started, kind of my journey in this. Uh, there's, and there's a couple people in the audience here that have gone through the journey with me. Um, I think Vinay, are you here? Uh, Vinay Benai, um, and anyone else from Silicon Valley um, OpenStack meetups? Okay, cool. Um, the story of kind of how this all started, a very simple experiment, and uh, who to blame. Um, the importance of the community, some of the things that we've been, uh, we've been doing. Um, how to uh, talk, to your talk your employer into allowing you to contribute to an open source, uh, open source project, and specifically OpenStack. Um, some things that uh, I like in my dev environments, um, in including how my dev environment's set up and then how, dev how our dev stacks are set up. Um, I'll ask another question. Who's used Git before? Okay, who was comfortable with it the first time? Exactly. <laughs> so those of you used Git before, um, you are much better prepared than I was walking into this. Um, and so if some of the stuff seems pedantic, um, please bear with me. Uh, for those that haven't, it, it's very struggling. Um, uh, testing the code, and then how to give back in the community. So um, are these topics things that you guys want to hear about? Um, we can, um, so, uh, and uh, this isn't me presenting too. Uh, this is a conversation as a community, so please feel free to interrupt. Um, you know, I, I don't claim to be an expert in anything, so, uh, but you know, know people who do. So, um, ah, crap, the picture's getting wobbly here. So a little bit about my background. Um, I'm an engineer. Right, so I'm a network engineer first. I've uh, designed some web scale infrastructures. Um, a storage, uh, storage and systems engineer second. Um, done a bit um, in uh, ITF, IEEE, and T11 protocols. Uh, participating more as a lurker in the working groups. Um, been a heavy Linux user since '98. Um, and uh, for the code that I write is generally built around um, automating deployments of very, uh, a very large infrastructure. Um, and specifically, it's, it's, it's sausage code. Um, this is something which uh, Sean Roberts, uh, who's on the board and runs the OpenStack meetups in Silicon Valley, talks about. That it's a whole bunch of scripts built together. For me specifically, it's about getting, if someone's going to take longer to do it manually, I'll write code. Um, I'm not a programmer. Um, this presented some serious challenges for me and the people that I, I went down this path with um, in, in the OpenStack meetups of getting to our, our first contribution. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this, how this craziness started. Um, who here is participating in a meetup or a users group working with others for OpenStack? It's a, okay, a small number of people. Um, so I started uh, actually about a year ago. Um, I had some large customers in Silicon Valley that were evaluating um, different alternatives to um, Amazon uh, Web Services. So they had a lot, of a lot of stuff up at EC2, evaluating Eucalyptus evaluating, um, OpenStack was one of them, uh, evaluating cl CloudStack, and I'm like, hey, what's this cool, neat stuff you're talking about? Um, but uh, I live in Silicon Valley, um, and it, for any of you who live there, it's 50 miles of stupidity, right? So we, we do just a whole bunch of crazy stuff that no one in the world wants to do. It's not very appropriate. Um, every once in a while, stuff escapes Silicon Valley. Um, and uh, this spring, I started hearing about OpenStack from, from customers and my engineers all around the nation, um, in Seattle, and San Diego, and Atlanta, and Boston. Um, and so it really got me down the road of putting stuff together and, and actually building these OpenStack environments both for our internal use and to learn more about it. And what came out of this was this natural evolution of, of I was really lucky that Yahoo's in my backyard and Sean Roberts had put together some, some meetups. I went there to go to a beginner session, realized the beginner session I'd already knocked out and sat down in, in an advanced DevOps session, actually with Vinay sitting back there, um, and got into a simple challenge. So um, for those of you uh, that don't know, so Ewan Meller's uh, a developer for Citrix, a um, really cool guy. Um, he had a simple idea, so a simple experiment in the meetups. He said, hey, we're going to get 14, 12 to 14 people. We're going to divide into three teams. Party, <laughs> exactly, but he's laughing. Um, and within a, two, or within a three hour session, we're going to design 
test, document, review, and merge some code. Very simple code, this is very, very simple. Um, the, the feature that we were gonna work on was a storage QoS, right? So this is the ability um, implemented through libvirsh, if anyone used libvirt, um, to go ahead and, and basically take a VM and give it levels of priority on, for uh, the block IO tuning um, down inside the VM. Um, to be able to extend that up into the APIs and then, put, and then actually make that, a, make that available in Horizon. Um, this took four months. So not three hours, took four months. And, it, it, uh, and I don't think it, it took, took that long because we didn't know how to execute on, in writing the code, but there are a lot of the challenges that we faced on how to check, how to, how to work with the review process, how to work with the other teams, uh, uh, the, with the other teams that are working in the project, with the basics of Git. So the first things first, and this is the first, the first thing that, uh, the half of you which didn't raise your hand. Um, meetup.com, the OpenStack meetups, the local users group, we would not be actively, we wouldn't be actively doing anything um, w without, without leveraging peer groups. Um, Meetup.com saved, uh, saved all of our butt. I mean, Vinay, do you think you, we'd be able to actually check code in without it? No. Um, and Meetup.com not being the, the product, or uh, the, but the platform, but being able to get together as groups. Um, there's, a, there's a range of people we've been finding as we've continued participation in them that people from all these different areas of the industry, we all kind of, actually I should, I should take off my badge right now, but um, we all kind of take the badges off and even though some of us are working for competing companies, we're all learning together. It's very, very powerful. Um, okay, so the, for those that haven't raised your hand, there you go. Um, next thing, uh, that is the challenge that I face and I'm lucky enough to be um, a director level position, yes sir? Yes, sir. So what, what would happen is that we would spend literally in a hackathon figuring things out um, and maybe one to two percent of the time actually getting stuff done versus 99 percent waiting for an answer on how to do something, who to talk to, how to push something through. Um, just simple, simple, stupid stuff. Um, and, and again, you always have to come back to, I don't develop for a living. Um, I functionally, if, if, I, if I have to deploy 1,000, 2,000 routers or servers, I write scripts to make it easy and make sure it happens, right? So, um, so not, not, not having that background, it's a lot, a lot of challenges. But also, there's some really good developers that have joined with us that also face the challenges. Did they answer your question? Well, my hope is by sharing some of the lessons that we learned, that the ratio becomes a lot, a lot larger active development versus uh, you know getting through simple stuff. Yeah, I mean, for example, um, this morning I was updating my presentation, taking screenshots, and, screenshots, and I, I I pushed a change through this in review. So, um, you know. It, once you get, get past the initial, there's just a large roadblock to the beginning of it. Um, a very large roadblock and little stupid things that trip you up. Um, so that's the, that's the goal is to remove the stupid things. Again, I don't, I, I'm not Linus Torvalds, right? I'm an engineer who's managed to get to a point where I can contribute in a morning while hungover um, to <laughs> OpenStack, <laughs> right? So, um, and it didn't get, and this morning stuff didn't get pushed through the review process, so it takes a little while. So um, who, ha who, who, ha who actually knows their employer's open source contribution pol policy? Okay, who's contributed without it, or in violation? Okay, I won't, I won't have anyone answer that. Um, wh what's really interesting, and I, I know about California, because that's where I live. Um, it, it, so there's, there's a lot of rumors, or conjecture, and I'm not a lawyer, and, and don't take this as, as legal advice, um, but uh, what I find is that, and actually went through this myself, I didn't have a defined, uh, defined contribution policy, and there's two ways that we can operate inside of this. Um, uh, that, and one, one of my architects is staring at me, uh, so you're okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, the first thing is, is you really have the legal obligation to notify your manager. Now there's two ways you can tell them this. Hey, I'm doing something you don't completely understand, or you can provide them a form, level, a form letter talking about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And what I, what I found is that Silicon Valley is almost stupidity, but in areas outside of, outside of, the, outside of the nation, that or uh, outside of that bubble, that people are pretty supportive with the goals of I'm working on code to develop mastery, lower the cost of integration of this product that we're bringing in-house, 
as well as to be able to put to be able to push requests for other people in the community to help me manage my infrastructure. Um, in California, um, so who's here is from California? Okay. Um, so I, I don't, uh, and who here hasn't signed an ICL in California? Everyone has. Okay. So who has a who has a corporate contribution license of those? Okay. So so only about thirty percent. Do that. So in California, you're only protected if your business isn't going to get in that business, or will not in the future. Yes, it is really important to get a CCL signed. Um, I mean, for example, that's why Nexus has a you know, the company, uh, my company has has a CCL posted to protect our engineers, to protect their intellectual property. Um, if you are going to play that ba that balance, do it at night, right? Don't do it on work hours, and just be aware. Um, next step. So who has an executed CLA already? Okay, contributors license agreement. Pay close attention. So if you're going to contribute, this actually th this 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 uh, tripped me up. So uh, first thing is you got to create this. There's Launchpad, right? And this is an account. It's basically an open ID platform that is really really important to your contributions. You're going to get notifications of uh, projects that people are working on. It's it's really closely integrated with the review process. So you're going to create an, an ID here, right? Now, if you're like me and you like everything to say Colin McNamara, if it's, so everyone can finally find you publicly, you may go in and change your username. Don't do that. I, I had written code that was sitting stuck in a queue for I think a month, um, and and I was only able to uh, to fix it. And I'll get to it at, the, at, the, at the last bullet here. Um, next thing you do, so join the OpenStack team on Launchpad. Um, this is documented, but I find I frankly don't didn't follow the documentation. Um, you'll sign the CLA electronically, right? So you get this, you get this thing back. There's a link. You get a piece of paper, um, and then you, what you end up with is a serial number. You got to take that. This is not the most elegant process. Update the wiki, and then request OpenStack contributor CLA. I hope so. Uh, I got hung up on this. I, you know, we, we had working code. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and then, and, and what's your step? Uh, isn't that open? Oh, oh, now you have to be a member of the foundation. Okay, I'll, I'll update these slides. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, it, and it's hard, right? And then here's the big one. Um, had waiting, had code written, waiting to be checked in. And by the way, if your code's written, OpenStack moves so quickly now that you're going to be merging your code, and, and, and especially if it's an API, it's going to be a lot, right? So you know, you have commit, up, commit, with commit, commit, commit that you have to you have to port in, and it's kind of hard. Um, a way around around this um, on IRC, pound OpenStack, or, ha or pound OpenStack, OpenStack Dev, and OpenStack Dash Meeting. Don't pounce on the meeting, um, but OpenStack Dev. If you look at the, if you ping the ops, um, I ping Soren Hansen. Right, so uh, I think he works for Lou Tucker at Cisco, and basically, hey, I got code. Um, I am you know, waiting to commit, and uh, ironically, I committed it um, at 6 a.m. while I was at VMworld. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, awkward. Um, but uh, you know, you, you can go ahead and ping ping the ops. Says, if you if you if you um, get your membership set up um, towards the when uh, a launch is happening or if any release candidates, what's going to happen is the same people are actively coding. They're not going to push it through. So you kind of have to tell them. So uh, let's get to say dev environment. So who has a dev development environment right now? Okay, is it on your laptop? Is it home? Anyone? Both? Okay, who likes to develop on their laptop? Bene, yeah. Okay, so um, if you do that, and who, who does it natively and not using a VM? Okay, so only a couple here. So we won't get too deep in, into that. So uh, there's a couple things that you can do. So one, we'll get into a little bit of how my dev environment's set up, which uh, I will point out has always been up and available um, for our hackathons. Um, but a uh, couple things, and sorry about the, the weird squiggly things. So DevStack is a development tool for OpenStack. It is not a fully working version, you might say. I mean, you can, ins you can create instances on it, but it's made for development. Um, you can, uh, you basically, on Ubuntu, git git, clone it in, and the CD into DevStack and run Stack. Now, beyond that dev, default DevStack, what I find, what I see people doing is, you know, Vinay, for example, puts on his laptop and has a wireless IP and it loses his mind, right? Um, I actually like to run it inside of VMware infrastructure. Sorry about bringing up VMware, but, you know, there's a lot of integration and test points. What I find really convenient inside of this 
is that it's really easy to spin up another instance. So I got my Puppet servers in there. I have Ubuntu 12, 1204 templates. Um, I can checkpoint if I'm making a change. I can run multiple DevSec instances side by side. This is from an engineer's perspective, by the way, not from, um, cause I, I know you can set up a, like multiple Horizon instances and check them, but yes, sir. Um, cause this, uh, so at home, I didn't go into the, the big depth of my lab. I have 24 terabytes of Synology storage, um, three of the little shuttle low power PCs with 32 gigs of RAMs and Core i7. Um, and uh, just works okay in a distributed fashion. Um, you could use whatever tools you want. Um, frankly, as an engineer, um, it's not as much of a religious war for me. Um, I used VirtualBox back when Sun had them, it was all right, but and there, there's limitations. Um, be aware though, um, if you do this, and this is not, not, net, not knocking on anything, um, I actually wanna push a portion of it to be uh, KVM native um, right now, but um, Got a lot of, you see some other stuff on there. Um, you gotta do other integrations. Um, but be aware of the default install unless you, unless you do some hacking to, uh, within VMware to push up um, the native machine interfaces, it's gonna run QEMU. So if you're doing development down for specific to KVM, you may run into some limitations. So now getting beond de the DevStack installation themselves, there's a couple things that we found that are really, really important. Um, and I think we've, we found this, we we're trying to integrate some API extensions um, into it, and there's a couple ways that you, you, you uh, expand the APIs, but there's this file called stackrc inside of DevStack. Um, inside here, you can do a couple of things, and I'm, I'm only showed the start of them here, but you can, you can point it to whatever Git repo you want. So maybe at your company, you're, you're utilizing, you've, you've forked a repo, you're running it locally, you know, recommend you know, keeping everything up, up at GitHub, but you, know, you forked it, you forked it locally, you can actually, you, you can point to your own, your own Git repositories, um, and so you can have the same development methodology utilizing uh, your, own, your own Git. You can also point it to, and I'll show it a little later, you can point it to review, which is really important. So and this actually happens to that. There's so many changes coming to OpenStack right now that not everything's merged. And uh, one of the things that we found is that, and we, uh, we actually coded for you know, about six weeks down, down one path and found out that a, a, working, uh, a working update to one of the APIs had been published by someone at Intel. Right, and actually backed out her code, integrated her code, and we're extending that. So getting beyond, uh, de continuing beyond DevStacking, and that's, that's where you'd actually take the branch that you're using. Um, and then it points to the working development. So uh, a couple of things, and these are just, these are straight out of Vanai's notes, or Vanai's notes, but little things that when you're running stack, it uses screen, right? So you can actually, you can kill the sessions, you can switch between sessions, each of the services starts in the session. Um, if you don't, who knows screen? Okay, good, half of half you be comfortable in this. It's pretty cool, um, but it, it's, not run in, it, it's not run in kind of a, a, of a classic way. So again, half of you know what Git is, so try not to bore you here. A um, Couple of things from the workflows to actually contributing here. So what is Git? Um, it's, not like some, it's not like CVS or Subversion, which are commonly used by infrastructure guys. Like, so we push, push files into these things, right? <laughs> push configuration files. Um, Git was made by a kernel developer, well, the kernel developer, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, it's Linus, right? Um, and it, 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 it provides like four ways to skin a cat. Um, and it is built in a way that you can be totally decentralized, that you can, you can, you can do development while you're at the lake. Um, in my opinion, for an engineer, it can be complex, um, at least the initial, the initial complexities. Now, um, so first things to get your, yourself set up, um, who, actually, who runs, uh, who runs Ubuntu? Who runs Red Hat based derivatives? Okay, so I've always been a Red Hat guy. I, 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 I mean, app, you know, uh, Debian is nice, um, but I've always been a Red Hat guy. And what I've really found is that most of the development moving, the, most of the development I've seen works in Ubuntu first. Canonical's doing an amazing job pushing back to the community. Um, I'd say at least when you're getting started, stay within Ubuntu. Um, it is probably going to be a lot easier for you. Um, in that case, so if you haven't installed Ubuntu before, you're not comfortable with it, app git is a tool you use um, for package management, you install git. Um, DevStack itself, we already saw the commands, but basically you clone it from the GitHub. GitHub's a website that's, uh, that's up in the, the cloud, you might say, and it, clone, it, it brings some code down locally to you, and then you run your stack.shell. Now, um, next thing, actually, I gotta, you have to tell GitHub who, or, or Git who you are, what your email address is, and then verify that with the configuration list. If you get this stuff kind of screwed up earlier on, we'll end up, as you, as you start going and checking in code, 
um, it's all going to line up, and it's not going to line up, and you're going to lose your mind. Um, this is from a guy who does everything wrong and doesn't read documentation first. Um, next thing, and, and who's actually who's you, who's used Garrett or Git Review before? Ah, this is this is an interesting one. Um, and and Vinay, if you want to grab a mic, um, you, 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 um, so get what, what uh, so with Git, you're pulling code down. You, so you, you 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 basically copy the code locally. You you, uh, you end up forking into a topic branch and you end up mangling it, right? And then you merge it, right? Or you commit it, put a commit message and you merge it up. Um, what Git Review does is it is it interjects this Garrett service. So there's there's all there's a, I think it actually runs at HP, if I'm right, the HP cloud, the the Garrett Review, the Jenkins stuff. You guys do the smoke test, right? It's complicated. Awkward. Okay, so portions of it there, and you know, and there's a whole bunch of discussion about. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, vendor stuff aside, we're all in the community here contributing code back. I mean, we, we all change our jobs every 18 months, anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, sorry if my bosses are watching. Uh, <laughs> but, um, anyways, uh, so you install Git review, and what this what this does with Git is it allows that merge to be forked out, right? So it, may, it allows it to go up and be stuck into the rack space review process, you know, all the stuff that's running up at rack space in HP, and that, that allows it to run the smoke tests and, and go through go through run tests and all that stuff. So you have to install that locally, and this actually introduces some complications I got hung up on too. Um, next thing, so you who actually I'll ask you, who develops on the boxes that they're developing on? So you, you actually edit code in the directories of what you're developing on, versus you develop on your laptop, you pull the code down. So who, who does it on the same box? Who pulls it down into another location, another editor, like Eclipse or something? Okay, no one else pulls it anywhere. Um, so I, 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 I would pull things like into Atlassian's product or whatnot, and frankly, that's just painful. Um, if you're developing for OpenStack, probably really, really smart to work in the dev stack directories, right? So that's an in-op stack. Um, it'll actually pull, it create a directory structure with all the different projects inside. Let's see if I, all these things right here. So. Glance, Nova, Horizon, Keystone, all this stuff. Those are all the, all, all, all the different projects that are inside a, inside a dev stack, or the different kind of code groupings, um, as well as they have the individual tests that are inside of them. It's really handy just to work inside there, and if you want to pull it in this, into a different editor, you can still, once you've submitted reviews, um, you can pull that review down in the editor. It's really, ha really handy. Um, in this case, um, I did update to Python Nova client, um, pull down, uh, and clone the project down, so I went ahead and uh, updated, fetching the origin, master, and then uh, or checked out the master and, and had it pull. What this did, it actually got my code caught up. It was like 70 commits behind on, this, on dev stack one. I got a few servers back there. Um, and then this error. So who's actually faced this error? Who's checked, who checked code in and didn't, didn't set, set things up and saw this? One? Okay, oh, apparently there's two of us, two. What's that? I faced it. Yeah, you faced it. Okay, so two of us. Okay, so this this held us up for two weeks, and then uh, Ewan was in drawn on a whiteboard, and we're like, Ewan, Ewan, come over here. It's like, oh, this is simple, right? Really, for me, it wasn't that simple. Um, so I had uh, it mainly was because I don't read documentation that well, right? <laughs> as has been it, it. It's absolutely in the documentation, um, and, and this is and so it's really interesting. Or it's not really interesting. It's really dumb. Is that <laughs> um, it's it's right there in the docs. Um, however, if you're distributing on a virtual machine, you got to make sure your SSHP is. is oh, they don't put a link. Yeah, yeah, there is absolutely no link to where you put. It says how to do, but not what you do. So that's why I put pictures on here, and all this stuff will be on SlideShare and it'll be on YouTube. So hopefully. It'll be searchable, and people trying to face this challenge will actually be like, oh, I can go here. Okay, so you need to, you need to create um, SSH key gen, so create some RSA keys if you don't have them um, in your .ssh directory. You can do this on your laptop as well as your, your dev stack VM, um, and what you do is you upload it to review.openstack.org. You go into your settings, and then on the left-hand side, public keys, and uh, what you do is just add keys, and you can add a bunch of keys, um, or you can keep your C standardized, whatever you want to do. Um, depending on how you have key management in your labs. Um, if you're like me and have the nastiest lab on earth, um, you just you keep adding keys. So 
once you do that, um, so if you see the top, you, this, this means that you haven't, you haven't put your keys up. This was a major barrier. <laughs> I mean, literally, it was, just blowing, it was just knocking my head up against the wall. And if you, there's a git review dash s. If you type that and nothing happens, it's very verbose, it means you're cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was painful. Um, so, and, and hope. Oh, I, I am. I'm not knocking any, any of the any of the core contributors, right? You know, I really appreciate all the work. It's just as an engineer coming in, I think this is kind of the future. Um, is more is more of a people like me taking a DevOps focus. By the way, is, is that we're we're engineers, we're we're um, we're we're finding bugs, we're finding we're finding things that we need to have enhanced. And then we're spending the time with our limited programming abilities to maybe put a little different perspective in, push blueprints in, or actually squash, squash bugs or add features. So um, it's making testing and submitting changes. So this I just went over this morning. Um, first things first, um, if you don't have Pro Git, just buy it. <laughs> just seriously. Um, it's on Safari. If you have a Safari account, uh, O'Reilly Safari, you can download it for free. Um, it, it is. It tells you everything you need to do, and especially if you get into, if there's some, there's some really complex things that Git can do, um, and you can kind of get yourself into a corner, um, and what, Git, what this book allows you to do, and it's not by me, I'm not pimping my own stuff, um, it, it, it really allows you to get through them, especially as an engineer. So uh, first things first, so say you figured out what you want to contribute to. So maybe you want to contribute to quantum, pretty complex. Um, you you want to pull contribute to one of the different APIs, takes a lot, a lot of time. Um, or you want to contribute to Horizon, which I think is a good thing, you know, that people contributing to Horizon allows you to expose um, the features that are inherently inside of OpenStack right now. In this, ca in this case, um, I created, a, I'm in Nova Client, one of the API, or uh, to, to uh, update something inside of an API. So I created a Summit Demo topic branch. What this does is it basically just forks off on one thing that you're working on. And I probably should have called it something different. Um, but, uh, and inside of this, I went down into the, uh, instead of v1 underscore one API definitions, and one thing I noticed that there were three talks, this, uh, three talks I attended already this summit that had, uh, we're talking about doing bare metal deployments. And so this is, so I went inside there, and it may or may not get accepted, but I extended the definition of parameter vCPU to, in to include vCPUs, to take into account what ITI, or uh, ITIL, I think, no, ITII, the, the Japanese uh, NTT and uh, what uh, AMD was doing, right? So simple, 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 simple change. Now, when I went down, the next thing you need to do inside of here is the same thing that's going to run inside of uh, inside of your infrastructure. So, who who actually who writes code and doesn't test it all the time? I I'm horrible about it. Um, here's the thing: if you're if you're actually submitting code for review. You won't get past the first process. So this, the same, uh, not the, not, not, uh, and actually, uh, I know there's talk of adding fuzzing tests and some other stuff, but uh, some of the, ba the basic PEP8 tests and uh, the basic functional tests of a single of a single dev stack are run using are run using run test. If you don't pass this, don't bother submitting it. It'll get kicked back. It won't be reviewed. Um, now, if that does pass those tests, you go ahead and commit dash a, right? Get commit dash a opens up an editor. Now, if you have, um, if you're working on a blueprint, call it out early in the code. Um, you're probably gonna get looked at, um, am I right? Um, if you're squashing a bug, call it out in early in the commit, call out the bug ID, excuse me? Right there, right? Um, and so, the, and the reality is there's just a lot of stuff getting through the, get, going through the review process. Um, in this case, put a paragraph of this description. Um, I actually think I didn't, I made, I made the lines too long. I'm getting hung over this morning. Um, so, and, and communicate what it is. And then you submit them for review. So get review at this point, pushes everything up, and you get in the process. So what you'll end up seeing is a website with a review ID at the top that we'll start, we'll go through, and you'll see, you'll see a table at the bottom, which will be whether you pass the tests, whether it has been reviewed. And so this is one of the things about working with the community here, is that if you're working inside of a community and not working alone, you can actually get people to review your code. Because if you don't have someone review your code, it will not get accepted, all right? That simple. If you're participating in the community, you can get people to review your code. So go ahead and review other people's code. It's one of the reasons why we have the ability to pull, pull to run and test someone's in dev stack. You go and test it out. Um, partner up with other people, even if they're different sides of the world. I mean, literally, Vinay and I were having a discussion outside 
of the, the developer who we were using, we we're passing the, um, passing the extended attributes field in the APIs, she's moving to Silicon Valley. She'll be, she'll be coming and hacking together with us with the guys at Yahoo and the hackathons, right? So it's really interesting and really useful. Um, so you can monitor the review process. You'll get some emails, you get some comments. Um, you have to tr you be aware and track, and eventually it'll get pushed through, or it'll get abandoned. So if, you, if nothing happens after a week, I believe it is, it'll kind of go in the, in the, in the can. Um, next thing, these things are, uh, so first things for, it was what I talked about today um, useful, especially those guys who don't use Git? Okay, yes? Who thought there was other crap? Okay, at least one of you, come on. I've had, a, I've had a one or two sessions this, okay. Thank you very much, my friends from VCE. Um, sorry about calling you out. Um, everyone loves OpenStack, apparently. Um, but, uh, so this is really important to me. You know, this kind of reminds me, you know, back in the late 90s, I was running a dial-up service provider. Um, biggest biggest dial-up service provider in Central California, which is like saying the biggest fly on the horse's butt. Um, and, and at the time, uh, you know, we had BSD, I moved to SCO, and then I got this install media for Linux, right? And this was kind of changed in the way that we did that, that we would do our hosting environments, that we would do Apache, do our shell environments. And frankly, it was kind of, kind of in the same position. I was lost. I was absolutely lost. And what helped me out was um, some nerds in the area getting together. It was, it was the same people I would quake with at the time. And getting together and basically creating some user groups, giving back. And I think this is kind of the missing piece of what people are talking about. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of people are talking about the technical aspects of, of OpenStack this week, um, but I'm a, I'm a believer that we have an opportunity. If you look at going from what 700 people um, at the last summit to with 1,300 people, and then gosh knows how many being streamed live, that we have a real opportunity to be out and engage people. So um, giving back. Um, first thing, I, the most important thing I can I can say, you've been learning a lot this week at the summit, and you continue to learn more and meeting and meeting people. Find people that are close to you, literally, that that are in the same region. Start a meetup group. Um, Next thing, so Sean Roberts has a session um, next week. So Sean Roberts is the infrastructure architect for Yahoo. Um, he's the one who set up the SF SFA um, OpenStacks. He's been awesome. Doing the, the boring stuff, like, a, like arranging meeting rooms, getting pizza and beer, um, arranging speakers, um, and roping in like the Marantis guys have been there. And so, and, you know, all the, what's happening is a lot of the, the architects from Silicon Valley are kind of converging. Um, set that up. Um, take the opportunity, and me myself, I'm not an awesome programmer, I'm an okay engineer, I'm an okay engineering leader too, but present back, teach people. One of, the most, one of the most rewarding things that I had this year was presenting to all my design engineers and 30 guys from Cisco. It's the 30 guys from Cisco didn't even know what they were doing internally, right? They, they were in the field. They had no idea what, what Lou was doing or any of the really cool stuff. Um, and I assume that that's the same for, um, you know, uh, that'd be the same for all of you. Get out and talk about it. You not only learn more yourself, um, but give you the opportunity to share your experience with the world. You know, we're kind of at the, I wouldn't say at, at the ground floor, the ground floor's already been pushed, but if you look at where everyone's coming together to do something awesome here, and I kind of encourage you guys to, to step up and take that opportunity. So with that, um, on Twitter, uh, my name is at Colin McNamara. Um, you can ping me on Twitter, see if my phone's been going off. Um, I'm probably the most available person on Twitter. I don't have my email up here because I rarely check it. Um, so um, with that, any more, do we have uh, any questions about anything, I, any, any discussions that we can lead? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you speak, so the question was, what do you do with DevStack with keeping state? So if we restart it, so, so a couple of things, that's one of the reasons, and, and, and Vinay has elegant programmer ways of doing it, right? And I have like a total hack it, just snapshot the VM. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly. Um, sometimes when, Vinay, you wanna, actually here. Yeah, so, and that's when I look at, like, I just use tools I know to learn tools I don't know. Um, and whether you're using, you know, whether you're using KVM, Zen, you know, VMware, it doesn't matter, right? You know, allowing, uh, virtualizing, you know, using a hypervisor, hypervisor to nest your development environment, 
it allows, snapshotting has saved, saved the bacon a few times. Okay, come on, there's gotta be more. Yes, sir. No. No, I, I actually, that was one of the things, so, it's, it, so I had, when I first came to meetups, um, I had already gotten a working environment working, or working environment working, you know, yeah. but I had already gotten environment, uh, multiple environments working, dev stack as well as, as, well as a, a, an actual installed environment um, using, uh, using SX. Uh, and I had gone through, there's operational guides, there's developer guides, and there's API guides. And, uh, and then there's a really old book on Safari that's, that's for, it's like, I mean, it's, it's only 18 months old, I think, or, or yeah, but it's just, not, it's, I mean, kudos for the author for writing it, but it's dated. Um, so it kind of walked, after reading all those guides, I got it enough where I could talk about the functional components, how the APIs integrate, what moves where, the process, but not getting through, getting through getting stuff to work, no. I need to be better at that, and I and then that's one that is that is absolutely so. If you look at participation, even participation in meetings here, I think the lowest attended meet meetings to this week are the documentation meetings, and frankly, they're the most important because what you'll actually find is just all this neat stuff you can do, and a little bit of it's documented, right? And, and we can complain about it or we can fix it, right? I mean, this is part of be, being a community. And, excuse me. You choose complain. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, we can complain about it, but if you look at, I think, a large barri uh, a barrier to perception of adoption is actually the maturity of, uh, of, uh, maturity of the documentation. Um, excuse me? Yes, they are. I think 12 people were interested. I checked. Oh, that's. Well, and I think they're terribly important, is really my point, right? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, no, it's it, it, uh, absolutely. Um, I saw that. Yes, yes, sir. No, I don't think so. It's supposed to be documented. Oh, yeah, but if you submit code, there isn't a sanity check they've updated your document. No. No. So, yeah, no, that, that, that's actually valid. Um, I, and I think that, you know, and frankly, I should be doing this as I, if I've been gone through and learning, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring, right? I mean, I can create some web, web scale networking assistance infrastructure, and I get a lot of it, especially when it comes to enhancements around quantum and the storage side. Um, but I should be going through and just poking through document. As I learn something new I can do in the command line, I should be documenting it. Uh, it. Yes, sir. Yes, you should, the, these slides will be available on SlideShare at the, uh, there's a uh, uh, OpenStack Fall Summit 2012. Um, frankly, I was drinking a beer out back um, before, <laughs> before this. Um, yeah, sorry, boss. Um, and then uh, there's also, this will be on YouTube in two days. So, in, what other questions? Here to help, here to talk. Anyone? Okay, so um, again, if you guys have any other, any other questions or ideas, uh, you can ping me, I'm at Colin McNamara, I'm on Twitter. Um, if you don't use Twitter, sorry, wrong decade. Um, <laughs> so, hey, thank you very all, uh, thank you very much for your time, your questions, your participation.